Hello Space Fans and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This week the LISA Pathfinder mission to test gravitational wave technology is a resounding success and elliptical galaxies may not form from the collisions of other galaxies as previously thought. Remember back in February in SFN 153, I told you about the amazing detection of the gravitational waves generated when two 30 solar mass black holes collided? The ground-based LIGO Observatory announced that they had found for the first time the predicted effect of two massive objects sending ripples in the fabric of space-time. Now, while this discovery was huge, the ground-based observatories located in Washington State and Louisiana are very limited in the kinds of gravitational waves they can see. These waves are seen by looking for distortions in space-time and the effect it has on a laser interferometer, which is a very sensitive instrument. But LIGO is limited in its sensitivity by the seismic forces from Earth, thermal, and a whole lot of other sources. And because of these limitations, LIGO can only see higher frequency gravitational waves of around 100 hertz or so. That's 100 cycles per second. That means that for every second that goes by, 100 complete wavelengths travel through. But most sources of gravitational waves in the universe, like those coming from supermassive black hole collisions from galaxy mergers, create frequencies much lower, about 100 times lower, at 1 hertz, or 1 cycle per second, or even less. So this means that LIGO is not sensitive enough to see most gravitational waves in the universe. They need something that can see waves less than 1 hertz. And to do that properly, they need to get rid of all the surrounding noise that exists in the detectors and have some test masses in as complete a free fall as can be created. Now, what astronomers have wanted for a long time as an upgrade to LIGO is the space-based telescope called LISA, the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna. And it's a huge array that has three fiducial masses in three spacecraft five million kilometers apart. Now that's what they wanted, <laughs> but sadly, they didn't get it. The project was canceled because other astronomers had other things they wanted more, like the James Webb Space Telescope. So Lisa took a back seat. But that didn't mean astronomers sat on their hands and did nothing. Earlier this year, in SFN 144, I told you about the launch of Lisa Pathfinder, a mission designed to test the core technology behind the Lisa detectors. If they couldn't launch a full-scale LISA mission, then at least they could test the idea out on a smaller one to see if it would work. Well, this week, astronomers announced that the LISA Pathfinder mission, led by the European Space Agency, was a resounding success. Now, if you'll recall, and if you don't, watch SFN 144. The link is in the little eye box up there. What they did was they launched a spacecraft with two identical 2 kilogram 46 millimeter gold platinum cubes, and they tried to put them in the most perfect free fall possible. They needed to see how low they could reduce all the external sources of noise that would allow them to see the extremely faint signal of a passing gravitational wave of the frequency range necessary. So how'd it go? Well, this plot shows the result of the LISA Pathfinder's two-month experiment in flight, where the goal is to follow test masses as they fall through space, affected only by gravity. LISA Pathfinder reduced non-gravitational forces on the test masses to a level five times better than the mission required, and within 25% of the requirement for a future space-based gravitational wave detector. The cause of the spike around 0.07 Hz is still under investigation. They don't know what caused that one. Now, the line labeled noise model is just a simple physical model of what they expected to, the performance to be. And it consists of a, this long flat part dominated by the lower frequencies, which is coming from gas molecules around the test mass. And then there's also this rising part, which was dominated at higher frequencies, which represents the limits of the instrument's ability to sense the motion of the test masses. And this model explains the vast majority of the observed behavior, which provides confidence that such models like this can be used to extrapolate from LISA Pathfinder to the full-scale future LISA Observatory. LISA Pathfinder was always intended as a stepping stone to test the level of performance that would be needed for a full-scale gravitational wave observatory. So now, if today they launched a full-scale observatory with LISA's Pathfinder's performance, then, we, they, then astronomers would be able to see all the gravitational waves they needed. 
Now, if you want to learn more about Lisa Pathfinder and Lisa, please join Alberto Conti, Harley Thronson, and me on Friday, June 17th for our Future in Space Hangout, where we're going to talk with Dr. Ira Thorpe and other members of the Lisa Pathfinder team. And the link to, to that event is in the description box below. And you can also see the other SFN stories on Lisa Pathfinder by clicking on the little eye icon in the upper left of this video. I put them all there so you can find them easy. Next, astronomers studying the evolution of galaxies have long been arguing over whether elliptical galaxies, the largest in the universe that have virtually ceased all star formation, have been formed from multiple collisions with other younger galaxies over their lifetimes. Now, if you want to learn more about elliptical galaxies, then I would watch my video on IC1101, the largest galaxy in the universe, for more detail. And again, up there. <laughs> have you noticed I've done a lot of videos? <laughs> That theory of how ellipticals form is under challenge now as a new study paints another picture. The problem facing astronomers studying galaxy evolution is one of data availability. Galaxies with the highest rates of star formation are also the dustiest because the violent process of star formation produces gas and heavy molecules and basically stuff just gets in the way. Now this means that part of the radiation emitted by the earliest stars can't be recorded by the instruments for astronomical observation in the optical and the ultraviolet band because it's absorbed by the gas and dust and then it's re-emitted in the infrared. And on top of this, instrument limitations make it difficult to observe this infrared radiation, especially in the case of very distant and older galaxies. We just don't, simply don't have any telescopes that can see that far back. And all of this complicates things for astrophysicists investigating stellar and galaxy formation, and all the studies to date have been mostly proposed predictions based on a purely theoretical model. But using infrared data from ESA's Herschel Space Telescope and ultraviolet data from the Hubble Space Telescope, a team of astronomers looked at galaxies both nearby and therefore closer in time to us, as well as extremely far away galaxies in the earliest epoch in the universe. And they created a framework that shows that there is no way elliptical galaxies could have formed from the collision of galaxies. They claim there just wasn't enough time to accumulate the large quantities of stars seen in these galaxies through these processes. This means, they say, that the formation of elliptical galaxies occurs through internal processes of star formation within the galaxy itself. Now these observations should serve as a starting point for more observations in the future, particularly in the infrared from the upcoming James Webb Space Telescope, which will help fill in gaps from observations of the earliest galaxies. And of course, I will let you know. Well, that's it for this week, Space Fans. Thanks to all of the Patreon patrons for help supporting and helping make SFN better. And thank all of you for watching. And as always, keep looking up. about these results is that if they launched a full-scale observatory now, well, hang on, my light went out. Right. So leave the path, leave the pathfinder. <laughs> Keep looking up. Keep looking up.